Hello, welcome all to the Chai Chai uh, Tea Club, our um, quarterly uh, video where I present and introduce the teas that I chose for this uh, trimester, this quarter. So this is the winter 2020-2021 um, uh, selection. And the first tea that, um, that I selected is, uh, I have to say, is a surprise. Yeah? You wouldn't normally conceive of green tea as being typical of, uh, for a winter selection, but this fantastic green tea is. And that's because it's, um, it's a really special, very spiritual tea. It's um, aromatized with lotus flower, all natural. The tea itself is organic, certified organic, but coming from wild uh, gardens in uh, Lao Cai in the north of Vietnam. And aromatized with flowers, you need between 1,000 and 1,500 flowers to aromatize a single kilo. So it's a very exclusive tea, very uh, expensive tea, very rare tea, and especially when the, the raw materials are wild, it's fantastic. But um, I really chose it because it is time, yeah? We're, we're, it's a new year, um, it's been a crazy, uh, difficult year in 2020. With the new year, uh, we like to sow intentions, and it's a year of transformation, I feel. I feel, uh, I don't really know exactly what's happening, I don't think anybody does, but things are changing, for sure. And um, Lotus is a, a symbol of change, it's a symbol of transformation. Uh, it's a very important in Buddhism, Buddhism for, for many reasons, that you can, you can read up on its symbology. I'm just going to share some of it that I feel relates to tea. And uh, meanwhile, I'm drinking it. I, I, I just, I'm just drinking it as bowl tea. I just put a, a few leaves, just a, just a few leaves like that, in, and uh, I just added hot water. And um, it's a nice tea it's for bowl tea. I think that for you members that received the, uh, more information about the teas by email, um, I didn't include bowl tea as a way of brewing it, but it certainly is just very little bit, and it's it's a fantastic tea to just drink as bowl tea and not think about brewing. But what's so important about this tea? I mean, what's so important about lotus? Lotus is is a I'm just a I'm amazed by this flower that grows with its roots, uh, you know, deep in mud, and um, it only grows in that kind of. Uh, uh, terroir, and uh, out of that muddy, murky uh, water comes this most beautiful flowers with this incredible uh, aroma. And every night the flower goes back into it, rests, it comes down and rests back in under the, the, the murk, and, um, and every morning rises again uh, with not a trace of soil on it and just clean totally clean and beautiful and every night goes back in and i think uh, that symbolism of transformation is, is is really um inspiring it's inspiring in such a way that i think we really can make a ceremony out of a tea like this it's a spiritual tea to to really enjoy um planting intentions uh, and inviting a uh, positive transformation in our lives and um, that's all I really want to say about that, except that when you drink it, as I'm drinking now, you'll be really surprised because the, I'm, I'm amazed that this flower, um, the, the taste of the tea and the feeling, the mouth feeling of the tea is so silky, so smooth. It just slides like oil. And, and I'm amazed that that's like that's the characteristic of the lotus flower, right? Everything just slides off, the mud and dirt just slides off. It's like these um, the lessons we can learn from it of just letting things, you know, not not uh, not holding on, not being attached to to certain negative uh, things that um, we may. So this is really inspiring, and that 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 this element of of uh, that silkiness and letting it slide is transmitted through a scent. Not, it's not even the flower. We're not drinking petals, yeah? We're, we're, it's just been aromatized. The flowers have been removed. It's just been in the same, it's been blended, but then removed. But this did get transmitted to the tea. And therefore, I find it that much more um, powerful. And I really invite you to make ceremony from this tea. 
The next tea, I also recommend serving as bowl tea, but especially because of the size of its leaves and the fact that it doesn't overbrew and it's so powerful, it's from old trees, wild old trees. Uh, they grow up to 15 meters long. It's a Hong Cha, so it's a red tea. And it's from uh, Vietnam also, from the northern Vietnam, from um, the Ho Tao forest. If you look carefully, you might see the white tips. So the, um, this tea is called uh, Snowy Mountain, Snow Mountain. And uh, I gave it this name, but just to give it a name, because otherwise it's just wild tea, you know, it doesn't have a name. But uh, I gave it the name of, of the, the variety. Um, we're, we're not talking about Camellia sinensis, we're not talking about Camellia samica, we're talking about Chantuya, it's its own variety, and uh, like big variety, and we're not talking small varieties, varietals, or cultivars. So, um, Chantuya literally means forest, shan, a mountain, forest or mountain, and um, Tuya is uh, snow. And it gets the name from this, uh, the white buds, probably also from the high elevation, where it's uh, from. And you'll find uh, that tea to be really uh, sweet and, and honey-like, but, but bold and with some chocolate. And it's a, it's a fantastic tea. It was uh, uh, picked and processed by the Red Zhao um, indigenous uh, people. So it's a, a tribal, tribal tea. And um, yeah, you can brew it other ways, but I, I really, I think that tea is a like, perfect uh, bowl tea. Uh, tea, yeah. The next one, another very rare tea. It's a 2020 Wuyi Shan Hong Cha, so from Wuyi Mountain. It's called Xiao Kai Cha, or, uh, or Qizong. Uh, Qizong, uh, literally means strange cultivar. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to this for, for a little while, as I wanna continue. But now I'm gonna brew this tea and really talk about it, because I'll, I'll be brewing this tea as I talk about the remaining teas. This we're gonna really brew Kung Fu, so we really want to you know, preheat the teapot. This is, uh, Hongni uh, Yushin clay from the teapot that was made uh, right through a global tea hut with a, the Heart Sutra on it. Fantastic teapot for, for Hong Cha. And so Wee Mountain, you know, Wee tea is, is definitely Kung Fu tea, yeah? It's, uh, real Wee tea is amazing, and I think it's a shame to not brew it Kung Fu. But this is Hong Cha, it's not Oolong, and I still feel it's amazing and um, and should be brewed uh, kung fu. So this uh, this uh, this variety is actually um, translates as strange cultivar. It's um, it's it's meant to say that it's not uh, shui xian, yeah, it's not um, qie lou han, it's not it's not a variety like that. It's a blend of uh, of trees that were grown from seed and. As you, you may know from other videos, or that uh, tea is a sexual plant, so its offspring are different than its uh, than the, the, the mother and father. Each each tree is, a, is an individual, and so that means that um, each each one is different. So essentially, if you grow tea from from seeds, you are going to have uh, each tea will be different. So you really can't say they're the same or give it a, its own name. Only when they've been uh, cloned or um, or um, and brewing only from cuttings or from or, or when you clone can you really say that uh, a tea is um, the same to, to call it it's by its own varietal so when uh, each tea tree is different then essentially it's a mix but what's fantastic is that each these these are these are seeds that were are from there from Wuyi Mountain and that uh, grew there and so they are adapted uh, perfectly to the terroir and uh, that means its roots, you know, the Wuyi Mountain is very volcanic, uh, rocky uh, mineral, right? We're famous for Yan Yun, for the rock flavor, the minerals uh, in it. And um, oh, I'm going to just pour this out in a second. Wow, 
Rojas. Aroma is, is so amazing. It's a, it's like a roasted cocoa bean. It just comes up. So that roast. So like the Wuyi Wulong tea, this tea is fantastic. Has a fantastic roast. It's really fantastic. And um, well, now I don't know what to say anymore. So it, this kind of tea just wins me wins me over. So it, I want to say that these these trees have uh, are really adapted to the soil. So that means that the roots yeah have found their way to to go deep into the the rocks and and get minerals from deep down and they they, they can grow they're they're adapted and um and that's really just fantastic now to drink a hong cha of such quality and uh like the the the, the nice aspects of wu tea but as a hong cha so that very the mineral that will come out especially in the later steepings but also this really uh, amazing chocolatey um uh, taste and aroma. You find it to be very full, very velvety. It has some also some baked notes like rye bread. And I definitely recommend you brew this kung fu if you can. Um, it'll handle many steepings. Wow. Each one of these teas is special to me, but I think I, I definitely have um, a sweet spot for uh, for for uh, Wuyi Oolong tea, and, and this tea just like evokes that uh, the Wuyi so much, but at the same time, it's chocolatey and, and, and it just brings, uh, it's very uh, surprising. Hmm. Great. Well, um, as I continue enjoying this tea, I'm going to keep talking about the other ones. So this, uh, this is a 2014 Nan Roshan. Uh, you can tell it has a more sm smaller leaf, some more buds and small leaf. It's a, it's a boutique tea. When we say boutique tea, we mean a tea that was uh, made for, for a shop or a special private production, uh, made for tea. I think you know this is not a mainstream uh, type tea. And it's not a mainstream type tea because it's shopur made from old trees, and that's, that's really rare. Um, it's really rare because in China, uh, shangpur, the, the raw green shangpur, is much more valued than uh, shopur is. Uh, valued in the sense of how much money are they willing to pay? You know, they, they're willing to pay a lot of money for a tea that they can age uh, You know 20 30 40 50 years like a shampoo and shampoo which is a modern type tea is, is um, In China is not looked at the same. It's expected to be cheap It's a newer product. It was not made originally with that, that nice material uh, or, or didn't become popular like that and uh, certainly not in the West and uh, so to 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 get a nice shopur made with uh, that kind of material, the raw leaves that you would use for a old tree, right? Old tree gushu shangpur is um, is really unique. So that's um, and that that's really what it's what it's all about. You, you finding finding a finding this kind of tea is hard because you you just don't. Uh, normally get people who are willing to pay shang poor prices for show uh, poor. Anyway, well, that, that said, this uh, Nanwashan itself is just a marvel, um, which you probably know from shang poor, and um, that would make it interesting to taste this now and, and see how the material, um, the, the, the raw material changes, right, as, as it's been fermented. But it's it's one of, uh, Nanwashan is one of the, the, the the most famous and, and cleanest and most pristine places in Shishwambana. Um, and it's uh, custodied by the Hani people who are an um, indigenous tribe that um, really uh, respect their own tradition, have maintained their ecosystem and uh, their culture. And it's just a, a, a really great to have tea from Nanwashan and for me, this is like a jewel to, to be able to have that show for and to share with you. 
And from Old Trees, one of the fantastic things about Old Tree Tea, um, I find, is its energy that it gives. It's very calm, soothing, focused, deep. Um, and uh, well, these, these old trees uh, grow tall, they give a lot of shade. Uh, we now know uh, scientifically that shade produces more theanine in the leaves. And that's interesting because then uh, with the theanine we know is relaxing. So now uh, I have a scientific understanding for what I feel when I drink this type of tea and that's that it's more soothing, more calming, more gentle than um, young, young shopur or young tea. And you'll find the same thing with that, uh, with, the, with the red tea, with the, the Snow Mountain red tea. It's calm. And uh, yeah, with, with this, um, the Nan Washan, it's a 2014, it was pressed in 2017, and you'll, you'll notice it's very um, leathery uh, and has a strong eucalyptus um, and even camphor uh, aroma. Uh, it's really uh, fantastic. Before I show you the fourth tea. So in this quarter, uh, I shared uh, five teas in the basic subscription, and then I added two more teas for the double subscription. There's two subscriptions. So now I'm gonna show you the fourth tea. Just gonna turn my for this, you know, just a second. like this comes in small very small it's about eight to ten grams 2017 uh, Chia Zai. I'm not uh, great at pronouncing Chinese Chian Jiai Jia Zai it's this little coin and uh, it's also a boutique tea it's also from uh, old trees um, Shanjiai Zai is a very famous uh, forest um, in Zenyuan County and it's very famous nowadays because it's many people believe that the oldest tea tree that's living uh, 2007 it's dated it's 2700 years um, is in that forest so it's um, well very famous for that I, I love uh, I think it's a good chance to compare it with the, the Nanwa Shan okay they're different years but they're also different size, uh, they're different forests, different raw material, and also different uh, size of the leaves. So these are much bigger, the leaves. And um, I think it's, it's, a, it's really nice to compare, to compare the two. I find the big leaf um, to be more patient, um, to, to let out its flavor more slowly. Whereas the, the buds and the, the small leaves of the Nanwa Shan make for really creamy, dense steepings, but it also will not have as much patience as, um, as, as these coins. Um, and another thing about these coins that I'm, I'm really surprised by is uh, they're a little bit fruity, which is uh, for me quite rare in Shopur. I, I'm, I'm, you know, for me, Shopur is, um, is usually not too surprising in that way. It, 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 I don't know, it's some, some kind of combination of earth and soil, and yeah, it, it can evoke different things or different feelings to me, but um, some different notes, but they're usually the same notes. But this 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 one, um, yeah, really, really surprised me, some kind of fruitiness. It's a fruitiness I can't even, I don't even want to put a, a say which fruit it is. Uh, it's, that's not clear to me. Um, I haven't really dwelled on that either, but, uh, but it's fantastic, and I hope you really enjoy it. And, um, oh, so that was the fifth one. That was the, I said fourth maybe, but that was the fifth one. And now I have the two more teas to, to talk about, which are the bonus teas 
that are in the, the double subscription. So there's a 2015 Liu Bao from Kang Wu. It's a Kang Song production. And uh, Liu Bao, Six Fortresses, is um, really f from Kang Wu originally. So it's, this tea is from the original terroir, where the tea is from, uh, Liu Bao. I said tea, Liu Bao is a fermented tea like pour, but, um, but just processed uh, very differently. Yeah, it's, um, it's, uh, a smoke dried pine smoke dried and um it's uh it's packed and uh, into a bamboo uh so it um the fermentation process is just it's just different the raw material is different everything else is about is about it is different it's a tea that uh grew famous through um its popularity in the mines uh, where it's a it's a I, I love this tea in the summer and i love this tea in the winter i love it all year round so uh, for me, it's, it's it's one of the teas I, I love the most, and um, and I really wanted to include this this really special two thousand fifteen. It's it's um it's it has the traditional taste. It has the be the the betel nut uh, taste that we we're looking for in the traditional processed uh, tea. Uh, a little bit of hazelnut like that. The betel nut, the sweet. Mm. enjoying still the weeds here um, and also uh, like like black currant it, it, it's a little bit fruity too um, so that's one extra tea that I, I share with you. you you may know that Liu Bao served as inspiration for Shopur actually and back in the day when when they were um, looking to to uh, accelerate the um, the aging process of Shopur and, and, and they developed this new tea in Shopur uh, Liu Bao was uh, was a reference, and um, and it's this. Many of you probably have not had much Liu Bao, and uh, it's great to to have another fermented tea. Um, one of my favorites. And the final tea is once again another jewel. It's a Baozhou, but it's from nineteen eighty six, so it's a very old and well-aged Baozong tea. Um, I decided that uh, for, for, for the winter, uh, as we have a new year and we um, honor uh, the passing of time, that in the club every year I want to uh, include an aged tea. Uh, and so I, I included this one, the 1986 Baozong. Next year I will probably include uh, an aged tea uh, among the, uh, in the basic sub subscription also. Um, but this year already for the basic subscription, I had planned all these aged, not aged, but old trees. So as you have a lot of old trees, which is also what I think of in this, uh, as with the passing of time. So the basic subscription has um, one, two, three, three old teas, another one that's wild. Another one that is perfectly adapted to the terroir, grown from seed, who knows when. So um, they're all very old, but they're not aged teas. And in the, in the, um, the double subscription, the 1986 Baozong. So Baozong is a very lightly oxidized tea uh, nowadays. But it didn't used to be so. And I, I can't know what this tea was like in 1986. Yeah, I didn't have it and there's no way of knowing what it was like you can't turn back time like that but it's um it's very dark so well we know it's not we so basically i know i can say that baozong used to be more oxidized than today how much so was this one i we i can't know but um but yeah there's some element of that that to begin with this tea was not as green as Baozong is uh, nowadays. And I think that's a, a nice to, a reminder. If you want to try uh, a nice Baozong with traditional oxidation, now we have one on our web. Um, that's fantastic. It's 2018. Um, so that's where you can see traditional oxidation. But uh, m many of you uh, probably know the lightly oxidized Baozong, uh, and, which is very close to green tea, and love it. It's very fresh and sp springy. This 86 obviously had more oxidation to begin with, and now with the aging, 
it's just so uh, complex. Um, it has definitely the aged flavor. And I look forward for your comments and, and share your questions and impressions about these teas and everything. And uh, yeah, I look forward to making uh, a nice selection for you guys this spring and uh, making another video for you. So please leave your comments down below and uh, hope to see you soon.